So um, I was doing some reading about transistor circuits and I came across this little guy which kind of uh, sparked my interest. So I thought we'd do a little bit of an uh, ex some experimenting with it. So what this is called is a current mirror and its purpose is basically to take a reference current and duplicate that current somewhere else regardless of what load uh, is on the uh, collector of this second transistor and the kind of idea behind it is if you've got two transistors and they're closely matched with the same gain hooking the base to the collector here means that they both end up with the same base to emitter current so in theory if their beaters are the same they both end up with the same current through their collector to emitter junction as well. I've read at several places this only works fairly well with integrated circuits because if they're on the same silicon you'll be able to get these closely matched and if we're using discrete transistors I have a feeling that we'll see some difference in gain between these two which will throw out the mirroring effect so we'll probably expect to see the output being a bit smaller or higher than the input but it'll be interesting to see how much imagine another problem we might run into is if either of these go into saturation outside of their linear zone it's probably not going to work correctly either another issue is that transistors change their gain with temperature quite a bit so it would probably work better if both of these are mounted onto the same heat sink or glued back to back or something along those kind of lines so i've picked out these two little npn transistors and using my Transistor tester. You can see that they're relatively. Oh, if my probes will work here. Come on, probe. Oh, everything goes wrong when you're trying to make a video, doesn't it? There we go. So this one is a gain of 151 and a base to emitter drop of 565. And this one is Hundred and forty six and five six eight. So we're what something like two or three percent out, but you'd think that would be close enough that we should see some kind of effect here. So I think what we'll do is we'll make the one on the left here kind of the input one. We'll leave a little bit of a base here and make this the output one. So base collector emitter, base collector emitter. And the first easy thing we want to do is tie the emitter to our ground. And we want to tie our base to our collector.
space to collector and we want to tie this guy's base to this guy's base all the way over there being kind careful not to short anything out. I'll try to get that the right size and you get there we go so we've got base to base collector to base emitter to ground Check that real quick. Base to base, emitter to ground, collector to both bases. Ah, and now we need a current to copy. So we'll use our 220 ohm resistor. Yeah, try to. Sneak him out the back here without shorting anything. Oh. Clips on this side are a bit stiff. There we go. Now oh, let's just clip this one shorter, shall we? That's a bit better. Now, because we want to measure how much current is going through that load, what we're going to do is put a little probe there. Do maybe a bit of a something a bit easier to grab onto? What about this? we are going to set this guy up to read the input in milliamps put him there put him there we also will put 5 volts onto the Five volts rail, have some ground on our ground rail. Uh, oh yeah, we need this guy as emitter going to ground as well. You can do that with this. We've got 18 milliamps going through our load already, which is kind of what we'd spec for 220 over 5, I think. Or is it? What do we got here? 220 divided by 5 is 44. I won't say we've done that wrong. 5 divided by 220. 0 0.022 and we're seeing 18. So we must be dropping a little bit of voltage across our transistor, which is 
basically what we expected. So now we want to measure current through this guy. So we'll put another little something to grab onto on that side. And something to grab onto for his collector. Oh, that's not. Oh, they're quite stiff, some of these springs. There we go. Can we feed this through? And we want milliamps and if the system works we should see this one and this one reading the same and can you see that we're seeing 18 Oh, it's taking a little while to settle out. 18.8 there, 18.6 on that side. I've got a little bit of difference, but it's uh, actually not too bad. Oh, it's kind of drifting out a bit now. I wonder if we'd have better luck if we mounted these on the same heat sink. Yeah, so at first glance the accuracy of this isn't terribly fantastic, which is kind of what I expected. I wonder what we get if we just kind of swap another transistor in there. Oh, those guys actually seem quite a bit more closely matched. We're seeing 18.2, 18.8. So the real interesting thing though is if we change our load. So we can change from a 220 ohm to a 100 ohm. Oh, I've got to carefully untangle that from this mess. Take you out of there. Put you in here. Oh, not that way around. You can't grab him. So now we're seeing 40 milliamp through there. And will we see 40 milliamp? Oh, we've actually hit the current limiter there. There we go. So 37.8 milliamp, 44 milliamp on that side. So this circuit kind of works with discrete components. Kind of seems like the accuracy isn't going to be good enough unless you want uh, something very, very rough. We've gone well out here, 50 milliamps almost there, 37 on this side. Do we get anything better if we Swap in our other transistor. Thirty-seven forty-two, kind of a bit closer, but not particularly fantastic. Oh yeah, that one matches substantially worse.
Well, that was interesting. Cheers for watching.